In the last video we considered two scenarios for a car travelling a distance of 2500 metres in 100 seconds. In the first scenario the car travelled with a constant velocity of 25 metres per second, so its velocity time graph is a horizontal line. In the second scenario the car's initial speed, that is its speed at t equals 0, was 1 metre per second. Its speed increased uniformly to a final speed of 49 metres per second. We mentioned that the distance travelled by the car under the first scenario, that is when it's travelling with a constant speed of 25 metres per second, is got by getting this area. Now, this area is in the shape of a rectangle, so it's easy to get the area. We just multiply the two sides of the rectangle together. This side is 25 metres, and this side here is 100 metres, so 25 times 100 gives us 2,500 metres. Now it's easy to see why that is so by considering the formula speed equals distance over time. Well, it, more correctly this should be called the average speed. But since we're dealing with a constant speed of 25 meters per second, the average speed is that constant speed of 25. Um, that's the distance traveled divided by the time taken. We just rearrange this to get distance equals speed multiplied by time. So when we got the area under that red line, that's all we did. We multiplied the speed by the time taken. Now, I also said in the previous video that I, I chose the initial speed of 1 and the final speed of 49 for the second scenario in such a way that the distance travelled by the car under the second scenario is also 2,500 metres. And that's equal to the area under this blue line. So in general, the area under a velocity time graph is the distance travelled by the object. Uh, let's see a bit more on that. It's easy to see for the case of the object travelling over a, a tiny time interval, say from this time here to this time here. If we just go up to the graph, we have what is approximately a rectangle. And the approximation gets better as the time interval gets smaller and smaller. How would we get the area of this here? Well, we just multiply the width, which is the time taken for the uh, car to move over this tiny time interval, by the height of the rectangle, which is the speed of the car. Of course, this is only an approximation because the speed isn't constant here. The speed is increasing. So we're actually getting the area of this rectangle here. We have a little bit of error here on top, but that error gets smaller and smaller as the time interval over which we are measuring the car's distance gets smaller and smaller. So it makes sense to get use areas to get the distance traveled by an object. Now, of course, for the entire journey, we could imagine dividing um, the region underneath the blue line up into infinitely many thin rectangles and just summing the areas of all those rectangles. That'll give us the total area under the blue line. So, as I said already, and I'd say it again, uh, the area under a velocity time graph gives us the distance travelled. So how do we show that this area here is the same as the area under the red line? Well, that's quite easy when we consider the following two right angle triangles. This right angle triangle here and this one here. Notice that we have a side that's the same in both triangles. The length of this side here is 24, which is the same as this here. Okay, because I chose 25, well, uh, to be the mean of the numbers 1 and 49. So 25 is midway between 1 and 49. Also, these two angles are the same. So, both triangles are similar. The angles are the same. Um, since we have a side that's the same in both triangles, both triangles are not only similar, but they're congruent. They're equal in every way. Okay, this condition is abbreviated angle, side, angle. If we have two angles the same in two triangles and one side the same in both triangles, then the triangles are congruent. If they're congruent, their areas are the same. Okay, let's see how to get the area under the blue line. Let's just take this region here first of all. Well, to get this area, we could get the area under the red line, as far as here, and just subtract out this triangle. So we could just imagine taking out this triangle from underneath the red line, and that gives us the area under the blue line between this time and this time here. Um, by symmetry, actually, this time is 50. Now, what about the remaining area under the blue line? Well, we could just take the area under the red line from t equals 50 to t equals 100 and add on this triangle up here. 
around this region here. So you see we to get the area under the blue line we take a certain amount from under the red line and we um, add on the same amount over here so we haven't changed anything. So that tells us that the area under the blue line is the same as the area under the red line. So the distance travelled under the second scenario is also 2500 meters. Now let's look at the general situation. The initial speed is called u, the final speed is called v, and the time taken for the journey is t. So to get the area under the blue line, that is the uh, distance travelled by the car whose initial speed is u and final speed is v, we just get the area under the red line because they're the same. It's just a bit easier to work with the red line. So I'll do that because it's in the shape of a rectangle. Um, what's the height of this rectangle? Well, in the previous problem it was 25, but we see that this number 25 is actually the mean of these two numbers. How do we get the mean of the two numbers? Well, we add them together and divide by 2. 1 plus 49 is 50. 50 divided by 2 is 25. So that's the height of the rectangle. And what about the length? Well, that's just the time taken, t, for the journey. So the distance s, s for distance, not speed, um, the distance is got by getting the area, the area under of this rectangle, u plus v over 2 multiplied by t. Multiply you, the sides together. Now let's consider the average speed for the journey. Well, we know that that's the distance travelled s divided by the time taken t. But you see, if we rearrange this formula, divide both sides by t, we get s over t equals u plus v over 2. Now it's important to realise, of course, that this is the average speed for an object undergoing uniform acceleration. If the object was not undergoing uniform acceleration, then the velocity time graph would not be a straight line. It might be some curve like this. And we don't cover those kind of situations in this course. Um, we only cover the situation where the velocity time graph is a straight line. So to get the average velocity, just add the initial and final velocities and divide by 2. Now we know from the previous video that v equals u plus a t, where a is the acceleration of the car. The acceleration of the car would actually be the slope of this line here. So that means that we can get a different formula for the distance s travelled by the car. Um, we can get a formula that does not involve v. We can replace v in this formula with u plus a t. So we have 2u over 2 times t, well that's 1u times t. And we have at times t over 2, well that's a half at squared. So this is a very useful formula for getting the distance travelled by an object once we know its initial velocity u, the time taken t, and the acceleration a. Now we can get another formula involving s that does not involve t. To do that we need to eliminate t from this formula here. So subtract u from both sides and divide both sides by a and we need to plug this in for t in our formula for s. So what do we get? We have u plus v over 2 multiplied by t which is v minus u over a. Well we multiply this out, the uv's on top cancel so I'll we'll continue writing over here. If we uh, multiply both sides by 2a and add u squared onto both sides, we get v squared equals u squared plus 2as. We are going to see plenty of uses of both of these formulas in later videos.